So we're continuing on with our um, sort of uh, investigation on the uh, use of, uh, for doing shear design using the code equations in NZS 3404, uh, which is the New Zealand steel uh, design uh, standard. So um, uh, this is going to be the, you know, the first of a, a number of examples uh, in which we're going to look at you know, how do we you know, deal with this uh, sort of designing for shear um, using these uh, standards. So uh, this will be the first one in which we're not going to really look at um, sort of the uh, standards equations because uh, essentially what we're doing here is um, just trying to find a demand. And this was one of the... Uh, um, you know, one of, one of the few things which we said that we would look at for uh, shear in steel members, uh, one is just trying to determine the shear capacity, um, but the other one here, and what this example is really going to look at, is the uh, determining the um, demand on welds um, of a built-up section through shear flow. So, as you can see the example here, we have a, a rather short, rather stout um, uh, built-up section made of some uh, 16 millimeter thick plates as the flanges uh, and then those are welded to a 10 millimeter um, sorry 10 millimeter tall uh, sorry thick um, uh, web uh, the whole thing is 105 millimeters tall and it spans uh, 600 millimeters with a rather large load on top of it um, so approximately 40 tons there um, and so what we need to do is we need to determine what the shear demand is uh, at this junction. And so uh, we know what shear force we would need to design uh, these welds for. We won't design the welds in this example. This is just simply uh, showing, you know, uh, as a reminder on shear flow, how do we get uh, sort of what those demands are. Um, or given uh, the moment of inertia uh, for the section, so we don't have to work that out. And we're also told that these loads are already factored. So the first thing we want to do is um, draw a free body diagram. And so uh, with our free body diagram, uh, we'll just put our, um, our loads on it. So it's simply supported. So if we know that's 400 kilonewtons, Three hundred millimeters, three hundred millimeters. Um, we know from sort of elementary statics uh, that our support forces are going to be two hundred kilonewtons each. So that means that we can draw our um, shear and uh, bending moment diagrams. In fact, we'll draw this just a little bit uh, shallower just to save some. Um, some space on our calculation sheets um, but you know we will have a constant shear uh, coming across the section so that's our shear diagram uh, that value will be 200 kilonewtons and that value will be 200 kilonewton. So V star, uh, our shear demand is 200 kilonewtons. Um, you know, we don't have to, but since we're here, we might as well also just draw our bending moment diagram. Um, it's, a, it's a convenient thing to have. Um, and it's just going to be a, a lint because we have constant shear. Uh, we'll have a linear distribution of bending moment there. Uh, that bending moment uh, is just going to be equal to PL over 4. Uh, that equals 400 kilonewtons uh, times 0 0.6 meters over 4. Uh, and all of that equals... 60, so our uh, you know bending demand equals 60 kilonewton meters. Uh, so it just as a sort of you know as a brief aside, I mean this is you know this is the type 
of uh, you know, member in which we would we would expect to see Shear actually uh, sort of dominating the uh, the design. So it's these really short span, really heavily loaded uh, members. So you know what I'm showing you here uh, was actually used for a uh, a loading apparatus for testing pile foundations. Uh, we needed a crossbeam, something short and, and stocky. Uh, and the only way to do that was this built-up section. So uh, while it seems like a little bit of a cooked-up example, uh, this is a, you know a fairly you know realistic uh, in certain applications. But with that aside uh, completed, well now what we need to do is determine uh, what that shear demand is on the flanges, and we do this with um, shear flow. And if we remember our shear flow equation. Uh, is just going to be uh, Q, and that equals our uh, applied shear uh, times the uh, first moment area uh, over I, and that will be, we want this in kilonewtons per millimeter. So what we're looking for is, you know, uh, along this beam, uh, and so if, uh, along this flange, what is the shear uh, which is going to develop um, per millimeter uh, along this element. And remember, uh, all of this is coming from the fact that our transverse shears and our longitudinal shears at a given point uh, have to be the same um, in order to keep uh, the element in equilibrium. So, you know, if we have a little tiny block here and we have some transverse shear uh, like that, so say, you know, just like over in this area, well, we're going to have some longitudinal shear. Uh, of equal and opposite um, uh, sort of uh, magnitude and direction in order to keep this little block in equilibrium. So um, what we need to do is find out, you know, sort of solve this Q and, and solve for big Q and then solve for little Q. So let's draw a picture and we'll just draw our picture of our um, sort of built up section here and uh, really what we're looking at is this area here I'm going to draw uh, right in the center of that area um, the centroid of this area to the centroid of the um, entire section well that's going to be the distance y1 and this area here is going to be a1, and you know, that's going to be width B uh, and thickness uh, width of the flange. So um, with that, we find out that Q is um, A1 times Y1. Well, that just equals uh, 16 millimeters times 50 millimeters, and that's just coming straight out of uh, our dimensions here, um, times uh, this distance, which the total depth is 105 millimeters, so halfway is um, 52.5, and halfway through on uh, the flange is um, 8 millimeters, so we'll just uh, subtract all of that out. So 105 uh, minus 8 minus 52.5 millimeters. So uh, that gives us Q equal to uh, 3,000, uh, so 300,000, 356,000, sorry, millimeters to the third. So, well, we now have, um, we have Q um, we have I, we have V, we can find out uh, what our shear flow and, and hence our shear demand uh, will be at the flange. And so um, little Q equals uh, 200 kilonewtons times 1,000 times 356,000 millimeters cubed all of that over our moment of inertia which is 
five three times ten to the sixth millimeters to the fourth. Uh, if we work all of this out, we get that Q equals uh, two thousand and seventeen newton per millimeter. And uh, let's get this into kilonewtons, and we get Q equals two point zero two kilonewtons per millimeter. So um, that means that for every so that means that for every millimeter um, of uh, length along this beam, um, that weld needs to take. Uh, well, for every, essentially for every uh, uh, millimeter of weld length, we need to be able to resist um, just over two kilonewtons for each. So that's how, uh, it's a really sort of short example there, uh, just kind of showing how we uh, can use shear flow in order to ensure, uh, determine what our uh, loading is on our welds. And this is uh, particularly important for when we have these sort of uh, compound and built up sections like that. So, thanks for watching.